So I've gained 150,000 followers on TikTok in two months, and it's basically ruined my life. My social media journey has been ongoing for quite some years. Um, back before TikTok even existed, I was posting um, comedy skits on Instagram. You know, made me fall in love with uh, the the ability to create content. So fast forward to like 2020 when TikTok started to becoming a thing. Um, I just posted some random videos on there about me and just like random thoughts that I have. And I went viral. Of course, you know, back in those days on, on TikTok, things were a lot different. You know, there wasn't so many creators on the platform. So things would go viral for whatever reason. It helped me get some followers. But, you know, like those weird followers where it's like people in Indonesia and in India and stuff like that. You know, no, no diss to those people, but it's more bot farms, you know as opposed to actual like human beings, right? So I posted a couple things on there and then I reposted some comedy skit videos that I that I had um, posted on my Instagram back when I was really into uh, comedy skits. From there, I kind of generated about like 17,000 followers. Um, and then I kind of just left the page. TikTok was just one of those things where even the people that had a lot of TikTok followers at the time, you know, back in like 2020, it didn't really seem like those followers mattered that much. And after a period of me like sporadically posting just to test stuff out and see what works because I wanted to get back into the flow of like content creation, but I wanted my uh, creation to be like more artistic, more creative, more like cinematic type of stuff. I finally realized that I was putting in way too much effort into trying to make every single video like absolutely perfect and hoping that people would watch it and go, oh my God, this is like a Christopher Nolan masterpiece. I can't believe what I just watched. It's the most intelligent, most captivating piece of art that's ever graced a TikTok screen. It's just like, and in my mind, I was thinking that's the impression people would have when they watched 25 second video that I had spent one week working on, one week scripting, another like one week editing. So like basically like a month process of putting an effort into this 25 second video that it would just be so captivating that just one single video would blow me out of the water and change my life. But TikTok doesn't work like that. And at the time I didn't know that, and which is why I would post and then become really frustrated when the post didn't, you know, change my life like I thought they would. Just flopped, basically. You know, I was the person that was stuck in the 200-view jail. I was the person that, you know, didn't really feel like I was able to understand the algorithm anymore. And it was especially frustrating because being someone that has spent so much time doing social media and skits in the past and been had, had success with it, like I went viral on Twitter, I had gotten lots of comments, views, like millions of views on Instagram as well. It was really frustrating for me to feel like I'm starting all over again and feel like I've lost my touch in terms of my understanding of how what people respond to on social media. And I also didn't want to make quote unquote ignorant content, which was what my Instagram content was. It was very much like raunchy style of content, not very artistic and 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 not the person I was anymore at the time. Um, you know, as in just growing, because at the time I was making content on Instagram, I was like 21 years old and now being like a 25 year old man, you know, my views on the world and, and the way I want to represent myself is a lot different. After a month in 2023 of just kind of like being sporadic and trying this really artistic style, I kind of gave up on that because I wasn't seeing any results in, with it. And I was seeing other creators on the platform just kind of do this weird thing where they were like, I was doing all this fancy editing, all this fancy directing and writing and scripting. And then I would see other creators just like lay in bed on their phone. And like before they're about to literally shut their eyes, they take a quick, their phone out and make a quick rant for one minute or 30 seconds or 40 seconds about something that they saw today that they care about or a thought that they've had literally a random thought and they'd put the phone down, be done, go to sleep. And they'd have like 300,000 likes, a million views. And I'm just sitting there like, oh my God, like I'm putting in so much time and effort into a single video. And these people are literally laying in their bed, talking to the phone, 
going to sleep and waking up with millions of views. I'm just like, I just, I just felt so disconnected from, and like so out of touch from like what I was doing as a creator and what other people were doing. And in a weird way, I became like jealous of those creators that like they had the ability to just talk, just spill their brain. And everyone was like, oh my God, like 100%, like I relate to this so much. Like this is amazing content, top tier content, what, what 10 out of 10 content. And I'm just sitting there like, man, like what value are you, you know, not to diss, but I was, the jealousy in me was like, how is your content more valuable than mine? And I was like in that mind state of just blaming others, you know, and being and being like, well, that's low quality content. The type of fans they're getting aren't going to be, you know, the type of fans I want anyways. I want intelligent fans. I want fans like Christopher Nolan, you know, that are, that are nuanced and understand, you know, that are intelligent and understand the, the, the small intricate details of life. It's just like about a month after me continuously seeing that and just stopping posting, I posted a video on my page. On November 9th, I posted a video to my page about, you know, having anxiety from posting on Instagram. And I literally posted that like an hour before I was about to go to bed. I was laying in this exact bed and I, it just dawned on me like I had been avoiding Instagram like all day, actually all week like literally deleting the app off, off of my phone and only spending time on the app if I needed to check something or I need like a check a profile or message a friend or just, you know, so in case someone had messaged me um, just to make sure like I'm answering people. And I realized that every time I would log on to Instagram, I would get this like anxiety. So I posted that on TikTok, right? And the video kind of had like this weird little spike where I was so used to like only getting 200 views on all of my videos and then they die out that when I posted this video, it got like a thousand views in the first like 40 minutes. And so I was like, whoa, this is, this is different. Like I usually never get this much views or interaction even in general, you know, like there was people commenting on it. There was people way more interaction than I usually get on a video. And these are like people I don't know. These aren't old followers or anything like that. And I was like, you know, I watched the video again. I'm like, what about this video is special? I'm just laying in bed. I'm just talking to the camera. I'm just expressing a thought. And I was like, you know, I guess it's probably relatable, the topic that I'm talking about. And it's probably something that other people have experienced. So I thought maybe that's what is gravitating people to the video. And so I was like, okay, cool enough. So the next day I woke up literally, Literally, as I, I was wiping crust out of my eyes, I literally pulled up my sleeping mask and I uh, posted a video that was essentially about the same topic as I posted last night, which is anxiety from opening Instagram, except I kind of changed the way I worded it. And I said, this is why you should create a new Instagram with none of your friends and family on it. Um, just kind of you know, expressing how the anxiety stops you from wanting to do anything. And you kind of get this paralyzing fear that you're being watched or judged by others. And it makes, you know, the app not fun anymore. So starting a new page um, that doesn't have that, those friends and family that you feel judged by will make it, that anxiety go away. And that video got like 50,000 views in the first day. And I was like, this is insane. It was like, I was so surprised. I'm like, people are really responding to this video. So fast forward, I'm like, okay, let me try and ride this momentum. Let me try and continue this process of like making videos where I'm just talking about how I feel, but let me kind of focus it on social media because I know there's so there became so many comments and so many questions and so many like other experiences that I thought maybe in my other videos, I would cover a similar topic so I could kind of ride that momentum. So for the next couple of days, I continued talking about like social media and social media anxiety and like all these like similar topics like that. And um, I was growing and growing in momentum, right? Like I was getting, you know, interaction and interaction off of that. And it was kind of building my confidence in myself and like what I was doing. And it was like, it almost like an unlocked a part of my brain because I realized it was so much easier to create videos that way in the sense of me just talking to the camera and that 
it was so much more rewarding for me because I could create more videos. They were easier to create, so I didn't feel so emotionally drained after creating a video. And I, I just had more energy to create in general. Like it was a much better feedback process because it took it, it was a more efficient creating process. And then even in output, I got a better response from it in terms of views and comments and interaction. You know what I mean? And so it was like my my create, creating process was getting easier, but my response was getting even better. So it was like a win-win. So I was like, I'm just going to continue riding this momentum and talking about social media. And I was as I was posting those videos, I was kind of using the process of what I was learning in how people would respond to different things to create this newer video, which went even more viral for me. And so this video was essentially just like a thought that I was having in my head that I had like a joke amongst my guy friends where we talked about what we call like the 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 sharks, the wolves or the snipers um, in downtown Toronto at the in the club scene where they'll, you know, they'll find new girls who are not familiar with the club scene. They'll bring them to their booth and all that stuff. They'll get your Instagram and how it's kind of like. Oh, it's not a good look for you when a guy meets you and then he sees you that you're being followed by all these promoters, right? I just made a video about that because it's something me and my friends discuss, you know, and that like blew up, like blew up for me at the time, which was like, it got like 200,000 views in the first day, like the first day of me posting it got like two. And I'm like sitting there watching it, like looking at comments, looking at responses, just like, I can't believe this many people care about what I'm saying. And I'm just sitting there talking in front of the phone for literally, a, like it was like a, a minute 30 long video. And I'm just sitting there talking and I couldn't believe the response I was getting. Now, a lot of people had their own opinions, right? Is not necessarily always a super positive response, but you know, a response nonetheless, you know, it moved people nonetheless. And I was shocked that like a video of just me talking could hold people for that long. It was a 90 second video and the average watch time was like like 30 seconds, which was way longer than any of my other videos. And so that was all good and dandy, but I noticed that, you know, it because the video was skewing on the negative side in terms of the response that a lot of people weren't like following me because of it or even liking the post. It was getting a lot of comments, but not a lot of saves and not a lot of likes. So I think the algorithm was kind of confused a bit. Even though that happened and it, got, it still got a lot of views, but the more interesting thing that happened was I started to notice that that spike boosted my talking about Instagram video, making a new Instagram video that was stuck at like 50,000 views. And then all of a sudden I started to see that get so much more interaction and likes and views, it was like, almost like it just brought life into my page and that video just took off. So that video just kept going and kept going and kept rising and kept rising. And I'm like, what is going on? So I quickly had to pivot back to like, okay, I gotta make more Instagram content because all of this content, um, all of the uh, all of the people coming to my page now are coming from this Instagram video. I've got to continue making in videos about Instagram and how it affects your mind and how it affects the way you feel. But eventually I said to myself, okay, I can't really sustain me talking about Instagram for like an entire year. You know what I mean? Like my whole account can't be based off of deleting Instagram. It just doesn't make sense. It, it's hard. Like I didn't want my account to turn into Oh, a social media content creation account because it was almost like an oxymoron in the sense that like if I don't have enough followers or enough interaction on my account and I'm talking about social media tips, it kind of defeats the purpose of listening to my social media tips because like what do I know about social media if I can't even get people to follow me or interact with my posts on my account, right? And so I, I was like, I've got to kind of pivot into something that a lot of people care about um, and talk about that that I know and I'm interested in. And so I was coming across this one creator, her name is Sarah Lauren. And I came across her videos where she's literally just talking to the camera about relationships, how to flirt, what, what she would, her pop, most popular videos was things a guy will do when he likes you. 
So that those were the kind of videos she was making, and she would just list out different like things guys will do when they like you, things got, girls will do when they like you, and it was getting her a lot of views. So I was like, why don't I do something like that and make my own list, you know, from a guy's perspective? Because obviously I'm a guy, so you know, because part of, part of the thing that I was seeing was like, you know, a lot of times if a girl is speaking about what guys do when they like you, it's kind of like. Well, yeah, you might have an idea, but you don't necessarily know exactly how guys think. So I was like, why don't I make a video like that from a guy's perspective and and actually say the same thing? But I'm a guy, so it's a little bit more trustworthy that that's how guys actually think. So I did that, and I got an amazing response. In the first day, it didn't do crazy, but what happened? I was seeing a good amount of interaction from people, even though it was a topic change, right? And I was like, okay, let me stick with this. This is something I can do and create more of. So I continued creating more of those types of videos for the next like week or so. And I was continuing to see more and more interaction. And so fast forward, this method worked, ended up working so well that I ended up going viral multiple times in the same iteration of just talking about relationships from a guy's perspective. That first video I posted about uh, like relationships and things guys do when they don't like you, that was November 21st. Today is January 10th and I have 161,000 followers. So I got to 100,000 on December 22nd of 2023. At that point, I had built a formula that was like proven to work. It was very easy and I was like on top of everything in terms of posting consistency. I was consistently, I was posting four videos per day every day. Monday to Monday, I'm posting four videos every day. I'll shoot my videos the day of and I'll drop them. And it's just me talking in front of the camera. I got my mic and it's very simple. I edit it right on my phone in the TikTok app. I don't have to sit on my computer to do it. I don't got to mess around doing anything. And it was a very simple process for me. And I was consistently getting views, consistently getting interactions and also building a community. And this is kind of where things take a turn is, you know, now that I'm at the point where I am now, I have 161,000 followers on TikTok, which is amazing. I love it. But the reason I say it ruined my life is it's really skewed my perspective as a human being. And when I say skewed my perspective is that now I'm someone that when I get invested in something, I'm like fully invested in the details. I'm fully invested in everything about it. And now I'm at the point where all I think about all day is numbers and getting better, doing better than the last video, outdoing myself. And the thing about TikTok is you can only deviate so far from what it is that people know you to do, um, that you really have to be creative with the ways that you improve your content, quote unquote, without doing something totally different. I don't have a problem with that in particular, but the thing about it is, is that it's really frustrating when you make content and it doesn't perform the same as the other ones and you start to question yourself and you start to, it's, it's, it's a worse feeling than things not working because when you've had that success and you feel like you figured it out, going backwards is a lot harder than feeling like you never even understood the answer in the first place. I say that to say, I at one point I was gaining 40,000 followers a week. Now I'm gaining about half of that, which is 20,000 followers a week. And then some of you might be like, bro, you're getting 20,000 followers a week and you're complaining. This is part of my problem. And is that I just, I've lost sight of where I used to be, that anything below absolute madness is like feels like failure and I can't get rid of that emotion it's not me trying to flex what I'm trying to show you is how skewed and how changed my mindset has become towards this stuff and how desensitized I've become to like success I just want more want more to the point where it's not a good thing anymore it's just it's, it's consuming my mind, right? If a video doesn't get 100,000, I don't even bother to check it. I don't even bother to read, read the comments. I don't even bother to see how people are responding to it. I don't care what the response is. I don't care if people love it and want part 
88 of that video. It's just so irrelevant to me, anything that doesn't perform to my standards. And my standards now has become, yo, if the video doesn't get 100,000 views in a day, then it's unimportant. I don't think that's a sustainable way to, to go about life and to go about my content because I, I basically, I post four times a day. I expect at least one of those four posts to be doing 100,000 views by the next day. And if it doesn't, I consider that entire day essentially a wash, like that was a waste. I've got to go back to the drawing board and make way better videos if at least one out of the four is not doing 100,000 in a day. Uh, right now, I'm averaging like a million views on my page per day. If I do below a million views the other day, because... Because it was like um, New Year's Eve and New Year's Day, I did like 600,000 views in the day. And I was extremely disappointed and shocked. I felt like I had to output double the videos. I was like, I, maybe I have to put out eight videos per day because the fact that my page is doing 600,000 views a day is embarrassing. Like that, that was literally my thought process, you know? And so I want you guys to understand like, like I say, it's not about me flexing. I just want you guys to understand how success is going to affect your mind state. And today I woke up and I wanted to shoot videos. I've kept on my streak of shooting foreign every day. And today was the first day in a while where I didn't shoot anything today. I tried to like just repurpose some videos. And so tomorrow I'm going to shoot eight videos instead of four. I was just looking at my followers and I'm like, oh, I've only gained like 3000 followers today. What a waste of a day. Like I have, I just felt so demotivated and so deflated because I am doing, I'm less successful than I'm accustomed to being. And I'm looking at my charts today and my analytics and I'm only gaining 19,000 followers a week. It's frustrating because as much as I want to be happy about the success I'm still continuing to have, it doesn't make me happy anymore. I want more. Like all I, all I can think about now is getting to a million followers. Getting to 100K was like cool. And all, I, I don't even, I don't even, find happiness in them in imagining getting 500,000 followers. All I can fantasize about is getting to a million followers. And I've literally set, I, I set a date in my calendar of getting a million followers based around me at the time, getting averaging 40,000 followers a, a, a week. Did the math on how long that would take me to reach a million followers at that pace that I was at at that time. And I'll show you what day that's supposed to be. Based on that math, it was supposed to be May 28th of 2024 that I reach a million followers on TikTok. If I was averaging 40,000 followers a week, I still want to hit that goal, but I'm going to have to up the ante on my videos if I want to average 40,000 followers a week, because right now I'm averaging half of that, which means if I do the math correctly, it should take me double the time now. And I'm sitting here like, I just started doing this in November, so May would be five, six months of me doing this and reaching a million followers. And I'm upset that maybe it'll take me eight or nine months instead of six months. And it's like, bro, you're being a bit ridiculous, but that's how, that's how far gone I am. I'll never be able to be satisfied with getting 10,000 views on a video anymore. I will never find joy in that. The only thing that will bring me joy now is waking up and having like 400,000, 500,000 views on a video in less than 24 hours. I've made videos that got a million views in less than 24 hours. Those are the only things that I find joy in or get dopamine from or have ex get ecstasy from anymore. Everything else feels like go back to the drawing board. You need to do better. It felt good to have any success. And now that I'm here and I have the, and I've built the momentum I've put in the work, I rarely get the feeling of feeling successful anymore. That's the saddest part of this whole process is as the milestones come, it'll be harder and harder to continue feeling good about success and not just feeling like I have to do more and work harder. Um, it's a sad reality of where my life is at now.